thing. The first thing I'm going to do now, after you've moved the robot around a little bit and you're feeling comfortable with that, is to start programming it. Programming has to be in teach mode. You have to have your emergency stop reset. You can't see any error lights on. So the first thing you want to do is, generally speaking, I like to move the robot to where its first point's going to be. Now, I always like to start the robot off in second home position. So what I want to do is move my robot to second home position. That's the robot upright. So I make sure my servo on ready is lit. It's blinking now. I squeeze my trigger on the back of the teach pendant. Then I go to robot. And then the main menu fills in under robot called second home position. And in this screen, you're going to see the current position and the difference from the specified position. The specified position is all zeros. Second home position is everything zeroed out. So all I have to do is hit the forward button with servo light on and it starts moving to second home position. I happen to have it in high speed. If you have it in really low speed, it'll take a while to get there. Once it's there, I should see my current position is zeros and there should be no difference from specified position. This means I've reached second home position. So I'm going to start my program there. I always like to start and end my programs there for jobs in the laboratory environment. Okay? So how do you start a job? I go under job. It's in your main menu on the left. And then right third one down, it says create new job. Right? You're going to get a job create screen. Now, you're going to want to name your job. So the way you always enter into something is with the select key that enters into a field, that goes into a field. It's not intuitive, but that's the way it works. So if I hit select on the job name, it pulls up a screen that lets me type in a job name. Ref, I'm going to put my initials, 990, doesn't really matter what your job name is. Then you always hit enter. You can hit enter on the screen here, or you can hit enter down at the bottom of your teach pendant. I'm going to hit enter on the screen because that's the way I like to do it. I can add comments on the job if I want to by hitting the down arrow whoops, once, hitting select and entering in a comment. I can put this in a job folder just like a file folder on a PC. Right? And then we're not going to talk about the other things in here. Once I'm done filling in the basic information on this job, all I do is hit the execute button. And now I've got an empty job. Anytime you're entering data into a job, you have to think about what's being highlighted in your job screen, in this main part of the screen here. The left side has got the numbers and the right side has got the commands. You always want to be on the left side, right, and through and to show where you're going to be entering in your next command. You always want to be entering it one line above the end command. If you're in this position, all you have to do is hit enter and it will automatically add in the move command that you see at the bottom of the screen. The one I'm seeing at the bottom of the screen is the default move command when you first boot up the robot. It's called move J. That means you're moving all the joints to achieve a position. That means the robot's moving in an arc the most efficient way it can to reach from point A to point B. So I'm going to allow move J because move J is usually fast. But VJ, which is your velocity of the joint, that's percent of the maximum velocity your joint can move, is showing a very slow velocity. So I'm going to hit the down arrow. Well, basically, I'm going to hit the enter command to move J. Then I'm going to use the right arrow to select the actual command, hit enter. And now it lets me edit the command details. I can't edit the move type here, but I can edit the speed here. So I'm going to change the speed by hitting the select button, making it move at 25% of the maximum speed for that joint, which is pretty fast, then hitting enter. Now I still haven't made the change 
of the program command. If I hit, I have to hit enter a second time to enter it in from that bottom line into the program itself. So I hit enter a second time. Now I've got a first move in my robot. Okay? So let's do a second move. Let's move to one inch above this thumbtack. I'm gonna make my first move using joint coordinates. So I'm gonna hit the coordinate button until I see the little robot, the black squiggle, right? My speed is high, that's okay at the beginning. And what I'm gonna do is just move my big joint down a little bit, move it over to above there. Okay. I'm going to angle my wrist. So it's yeah, roughly in the right spot. Now, now that it's roughly in the right area at the right orientation, I'm gonna move it in X, Y, Z coordinate mode. So I hit coordinate mode again. And now it's switching to the X, Y, Z coordinate mode. Now I can use the plane of my flat surface here to move in. So I hit X plus to move it forward me. Let's slow this down a little bit. X plus, move it toward me. Y minus, to move it to the left a little bit. And then Z minus, to move it down a little bit. Nah, eh, right there. Okay, so now my robot is positioned about, eh, maybe an inch, maybe I'll make it a little lower, inch and a quarter. It's about an inch above my, um, position where I want to necessarily pick up something. Okay? So, my screen is flashing showing me I'm entering in the move on top of another move. That's not going to work. I'm going to use my left arrow to highlight the number one command because that's where I'm going to enter in right below that. Why is the screen flashing? It's flashing. That little flash tells me that I'm no longer at that pre-programmed position where that move J was. So I want to move another joint, so it's going to go down to this position most efficiently as possible at the same speed, and all I have to do is hit enter. And now you can see it's no longer flashing. That means the place where the robot's at is where it's been currently programmed for. It's going to move down to this point, one inch above the thumbtack. But, I want to add a comment so I know what this point is. So I'm going to go select my command, hit select. This time, instead of changing the speed, I'm going to hit select again on the command itself to allow me to choose another option in that command, the comment option. So I'm going to hit select, and now I see the list of options, what they call them detail edits available for me to use that command. And uh, we're going to get into end weights and position levels and things like that in later class. But let's go down to the one I'm going to use, which is the comment. Currently unused. I hit select and I move it up to the little slash symbol, which takes it off unused and it allows me to enter in a comment. The default comment is comment. I don't want to use that. So I hit select again. And I will change this to a command that says uh, inch space over, oops, over space one. All right, so this we're going to call this thumbtack one. So we're going to call this move two one inch over one. Now I hit enter here. All right, I got to let it, a lot of enters to hit to get this command change. Enter again at the bottom, enter again, and enter again. It's not entered in, I think that was four enters to get that comment in. It's not entered until you see it in the job itself. Once it's in the job, you know you've achieved it. So it's now one inch over one. So I want to do a different kind of move command next. I want to move down to that thumbtack. So I'm going to go, I'm still, my servo's still on. 
I'm gonna go down, whoops. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go down with a minus Z to that thumbtack position. And that's roughly right. I'm not too worried about making it perfect for this program. All right, but now I wanna choose a different move. Instead of move J, I'm gonna use move L. Move L is a linear move. Move L is a linear move. It moves in a nice straight line. So how do I choose a different move function? I hit motion type, All right? Oops, but that doesn't work unless I'm selecting the number command. And then as soon as I do that, I can see that my next move will be a move L. Now move L's are inches per minute. So 11 inches per minute is very slow. So we probably want to increase that speed. But as soon as I hit enter, I'll get a move L at this position and bang, you can see I got a move L in number, line number three, V equals 11. I'm gonna right arrow over to that, hit select. And now I can right arrow again and hit select and change my control point speed. So I'm gonna go say 50 inches per minute, enter, enter. And now I can see that I've got my move L in there with a speed of 50 inches per minute. Now this, the unit of measure for the number of uh, units per minute or per hour or per second can be changed in another place. So different robots have different settings for that. You gotta watch yourself. Okay, so then I wanna take another linear move and go straight over to thumbtack over here. So I'm still in my XYZ coordinate mode. I can see my little axes at the top there. And now I'm gonna use my plus Y to get over there. We're going to call that good enough. That'll be my last position in this program. Once again, I'm going to use a move L. I won't have to change anything. I'm going to remove, keep my speed the same, but hey, I noticed that I'm flashing, but I'm not on the number. In, now I'm on the number. Now, if I hit enter, it will enter in this bottom command, move L V 50. And now it's moved to thumbtack number two. Okay. And my last command, I want it to move the second home position. To get it quick to second home, all I can have to do is go back up to my first move J command and hit the forward button. If it's clicking on 001, right, I can move all the way up there by just hitting the forward button. And I'm doing that and the robot's moving to that point number one by hitting the forward button. Okay, and then I have to cursor back down to, to highlight line four, because the enter com the command I'm gonna use will enter it below line four. The default move command is move L. That's what's showing. I wanna fix that by hitting the motion type button at the bottom here. Oh, move C, I don't want that. Move S, I don't want that. Move J, so back around to move J. It's using the same default speed I used before. That's great. So now I just have to hit enter and I've entered in move J.